And the last clip for this week isn't something that's like the bad. I'm glad he's okay more than anything. More just like what was he doing and how did he actually have the human strength to do it? You ever seen a semi truck going down the road and been like, hey, I should jump onto the back and hang on? Yeah, me neither. I've never thought it was a good idea, but one guy apparently jumped onto the back of a truck and managed to hang on for over 100 miles. That is some superhuman levels of dedication to like actually hop onto a truck and stay there for over 100 miles. Sounds like something he would do. Wichita man arrested for public intoxication after hanging on the back of a semi for over 100 miles. That's an incredibly long time to be hanging onto the back of a semi. What do you think he was thinking while he's on the back of this truck? I also love how they got him from public intoxication. 100 miles takes what, maybe two hours to drive unless you're going real quick? Semis can't go insanely fast, so let's say it took an hour and a half, if they were going quickly. He was so intoxicated when he hopped onto the back of the truck that he wasn't sobered up when they arrested him for public intoxication? Goodness gracious, alright? I'm not trying to say it's a good thing to be that, that intoxicated. However, however, the fact he was that intoxicated but still had the grip strength to hop onto the back of a semi truck and hang on for a hundred miles. Imagine what this man would be able to do if he was sober. He probably has the grip strength to like walk up to a bank vault, grab the thing that spins and just rip the entire door off. Are you kidding me, man? He literally is so intoxicated he doesn't sober up at all in an hour while hanging on to the back of a semi. Once you're on, I guess, what are you going to do to get off? If you're on the freeway and there's no red lights or anything, yeah, you just kind of got to hang on and hope for the best. Unless you're brave enough to do a tuck and roll off a semi truck, which I'm not, especially going freeway for speeds. Freeway freeds? I don't know what I was trying to say there, dude. Just bear with me. Either way, the guy is just uh, an absolute legend, intoxicated or not. I'm not saying it's good to be that intoxicated, but you're telling me you're not at least slightly curious if he has any type of mutant powers now. It's so bizarre, said Trooper Eric Foster with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. That's something you don't often hear from a first responder, but what happened Monday evening would have had those who've pretty much seen it all scratching their heads. The person called and said there appears to be a man on the back of this truck. It all started in Wichita when investigators say 30-year-old Dustin Slocum hopped onto the back rail of a semi-truck as it was leaving a shipping yard and he held on for 130 miles. Nearly two hours and ended up in Guthrie, Guthrie, sorry, Oklahoma at around 2.30 in the morning. You know back in the day when people would like throw their belongings in the train car and hop up? That's basically what he did the modern equivalent of, just waiting at the shipping yard hopping on the back of a semi truck. Do you follow the truck if you're the person who called this in or do you just like not want to see what happens and you've reported it so it's not your problem? I don't know. And also, did the police come out and like follow the truck while he's on the back? Was he waving at them doing hand signals or something? I'm just saying, that's an incredibly long time to be on the back of a semi-truck. Two hours? Goodness gracious, I hope he had an iPad or something just standing there thinking to himself, man, this would be so much worse if I didn't have cut the rope on this iPad. Am I right, guys? What an absolute classic. Whose jurisdiction is this? Is it the place he hopped on the truck? Or does, like, the place where he ended up take jurisdiction? I'm assuming it's the place he ended up. Does the truck driver have any say in it? What if the truck driver's just like, nah, it's cool, I I'm not worried about it. And they're like, dude, he was on the back of your truck for a really long time. Yeah, whatever, I, I just don't really care. And they're like, are you sure? Like, we really want to do something. Yeah, don't worry about it, I don't care. All right, if you say so, they just have to leave. Dustin ends up 130 miles from home. Guys, how do I get home? H how do I get back from here? I don't know, maybe you should have thought about that before you hopped on the semi-truck, young man. Not that 30's insanely young. 30 is a little bit too old to be jumping on the back of a truck and riding it for two hours. Like, not that there's any age I would expect it, but this seems very drunk college kid to me. This is a drunk college kid move. When I heard somebody took a crazy ride, I'm thinking, yeah, that's him. That's the kind of stuff he would do, said Shane King. King has known him for a decade and is a former landlord, and he has said nothing but trouble as a tenant. Kansas Department of Correction records also showed that he served time for aggravated battery. In this case, police arrested him for public intoxication and joyriding. 
both misdemeanor charges to which he pleaded not guilty. I mean, listen, man, I'm not saying you're guilty because you've pled not guilty, you haven't been convicted in a court of law, but intoxication explains how you think this is a good idea. And if you were on the back of his truck for two hours, it kind of is joyriding. I don't know what else you would call it. Is that the charge for being a stowaway? Like, what else would you really call it, man? I I'm not even going to get into anything else. I'm not surprised he has a record. It just seems like something that someone that would do this would have. Not in a bad way. Like, I, I mean, it is what it is. Like, it is what it is. It's a factual statement. He's lucky he didn't get hurt, though. Being intoxicated on the back of a semi-truck for hours is pretty dangerous. Like, it's nuts he was able to hang on. I still gotta give him that. That's some insane grip strength, bro. Are you kidding me? This guy doesn't even need a can opener. He just grabs the top of the lid and rips that baby off. I bet you this guy has the grip strength of, like, I, I don't know, an NFL wide receiver, dude. He probably goes to catch a football and accidentally pops it. He held onto a semi-truck while, while a little tipsy for two hours. I'm not saying you should do that. It's a bad idea, but, like, that's, that's some grip strength, ladies and gents.